Welcome to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock, who is the co-founder of Videosocials.net and of VideoInterviewPodcast.com. In every episode, Mark interviews business and organizational thought leaders who share their stories of how they inspire others by making a difference. You can find this show on Videosocials.net and YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and almost any podcast platform of your choosing. Welcome, and I'm very excited today because my guest is Carrie Jacobson. Carrie is the CEO and owner of Jacobson Family Law in Maryland. Welcome, Carrie. It's wonderful to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. It's abs absolutely my pleasure. And uh, you've been a member of uh, one of our services, Video Socials, uh, for some time. Um, but I just found out today that you're, you know, operating out of Columbia, Maryland, and that's my old stomping ground. I was in, in Ellicott City, so uh, that's terrific. And and then I understand that you actually are from originally North Carolina, which my father's family is from North Carolina. I spent four or five years of my youth uh, down there as well. Well, so small world. Small world for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. So. I always like to start, Carrie, with, you know, what's your story? You know, how did, how did you get into family law and, and, you know, what life events had you had you uh, do what you decided to do? Sure. I'll try to make it quick. Um, no I don't think it's, it's not a too windy story, but um, I've known since I was in at least middle school that I was going to be an attorney. Um, originally, I intended to be a prosecutor for a short period of time. I thought I would go into the FBI, um, but all of that, I knew law school was the thing that I was going to do. Um, took the LSATs while in undergrad mm -hmm. and then moved to Maryland from North Carolina um, because I wanted to establish residency with the intention of going to a law school here in Maryland. Took a five uh, year detour. <laughs> Um, in between and met my now husband. Um, and ultimately it was, I don't want to take the LSAT again, so I need to apply now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I did that and ended up at University of Baltimore and did the evening student program while I worked full time. And first year of law school um, was as challenging as everyone says, but on top of that, there, we ha had some personal uh, st stressors. Um, we moved to a new town and bought a house. Um, I got a new job and I was um, planning our wedding, which was two weeks after the end of our first year, my first year of law school. So um, if I can make it through that, I can make it through anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, after graduating, or while I was actually in law school, I started working for a firm where um, we exclusively primarily did uh, family law. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that was just the right fit for me. Right. Um, and then I stayed on at that firm after graduating and worked there for a few years and ultimately decided to open my own practice in 2015. Awesome. And um, you focus on you focus on family law um, and there's a question I'm going to ask you later as far as, you know, that you're, you're focusing on non-litigation, uh, which is, which I'm a big fan of. I believe you have mediation training as yeah. well. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we, we drank the Kool-Aid years ago on that. We have many mediators that, that we've consulted with, that had as clients for our various services, et cetera, um, for, for many years. So, um, we're big proponents of, I hate the word alternative dispute, yeah. <laughs> but for dispute resolution, um, because I really feel like when it comes to mediation, collaborative divorce, things like that, you know, you're, you're working towards resolving something rather than rather than beating each other up. Um, so uh, kudos to you for that. But but what's kind of interesting today, and and uh, and folks, we'll have the links to all the ways that you can reach and and, and reach out to and get information from Carrie. And I, and I did really want to give you a, a, a shout out on your website, Carrie, because it is fantastic. Um, uh, we've you. been in and around the online marketing for 15 years or so, and um, yours is as good as I've seen. So it's. Uh, Please do check it out, folks. It's jacobsonfamilylaw.com. 
Uh, but you're also on TikTok at Jacobson Family Law and LinkedIn as Carrie Jacobson and Facebook as Jacobson Family Law. And you, and you have your own YouTube channel, Jacobson Family Law, et cetera. So all of that, it, again, will be linked below. But you, you've offered a tremendous amount, really a wealth of information um, for prospective clients and clients uh, online and, and, and kudos for doing so. But you're kind of expanding into a new area that's beyond just family law, and that is estate planning services. And, and um, can you tell me more about that? Why did you decide to do that? Absolutely. So I've always done some estate planning. I was a member of a legal insurance program for a while. And so we did offer it as a service. It wasn't something we promoted. Mm -hmm. um, however, really feel that the estate planning ties in so much with our family law clients, because mm -hmm. obviously once they've gotten divorced, it's important for them to now update their estate plans um, to reflect their new reality. And so we really wanted to add this as a value add for services we can provide our existing clients in mm -hmm. addition to other clients that may be looking for those estate planning services. Fantastic. So, um, that really kind of fits hand in glove in, you know, what is your primary, which is we've been kind of hovering around, but you know, that is the whole, you know, non-litigation, media, mediation, et cetera. But basically for me, I think it all comes back to deciding to work out a separation or a divorce outside of the court. And what do you see as the primary benefits, the primary reasons that people would choose to not go to court, um, to handle family matter, to handle, you know, to handle, a, you know, an emotional matter, to handle, a, you know, a, a, um, you know, <laughs> I've always, go, go ahead, because I could list off 50, 50, 50 <laughs> benefits myself, but, but yeah. let's hear it from you. Yeah, so there's obviously many, many reasons people will choose or should choose um, an out-of-court resolution as opposed to uh, in-court litigation. Um, Money is absolutely one of them because an out-of-court resolution costs much, much less than if parties go through a full contested case. The amount of time it takes to resolve their differences, um, you know, if, if a case truly is litigated all the way through trial here in Maryland with all of the COVID backups, you're looking at least two years um, for a final resolution. Whereas if you reach an agreement outside of court, we've had some people finalize things as little as three to four months. And that's the agreement and the divorce um, piece as well. There's also the emotional, I mean, the untangible is the emotional side of all of the stress and anxiety that comes along with the court process. Mm -hmm. Whereas resolving issues outside of court, you know, it really is our goal is to take the drama out of divorce and to minimize that stress as much as possible so that you can move on to that that next phase and not have the emotional and stress and anxiety that comes along with the court process and so many of our clients um you know want to have a good communication um and good parent co-parenting relationship with their current spouse soon to be former spouse and I think that going through the court process just makes that so much more challenging as opposed to resolving issues outside of court. Absolutely. And one of the things that I've had other, you know, mediators, collaborative uh, divorce professionals, et cetera, say is, is that, you know, it leaves the couple in the driver's seat rather than turning over their power and their future to a judge. Absolutely. Uh, or for, or for t attorneys to try to negotiate because uh, let's face it, very few, people actually end up in court, right. um, uh, the, the cost and the time is just astronomical. Most most divorces end up being settled, but it's settled after an argument. It's settled after an, uh, an extended ongoing um, mm -hmm. battle, as it were, you know, between uh, between themselves and their attorneys and their attorneys with each other, et cetera. Right. Um, and, uh, and oftentimes and, settled at the very last minute yep. and many of the details are left out and that just sets these individuals up for future disputes whereas if they take the time to be intentional 
with their resolutions and think through the what ifs, um, then they can future proof disputes so that they don't end up in litigation later. I, I love that concept, you know, future, it really setting, setting yourself up to have a successful life apart. But of course, if you're parents, you're going to be parents for, you know, the rest of your life, essentially. So um, uh, why, why not take a little bit of time now, save yourself a lot of money and a lot of time to, in, in, in the overall process and actually figure out how you're going to work together to be parents mm -hmm. while you go about your, you know, getting on with your own, with your own life. So um, really fantastic. But um, you, my, my next question is, is, I think we've pretty much answered, but you know, why did you decide to focus pretty much exclusively on, the, on, on a non-litigation practice? Yeah, well, obviously all of the benefits we just talked about for our clients, um, you know, doing traditional family law, I really did see how the litigation um, can impact, negatively impact families and kids. From a personal standpoint, it also has drastically improved my life. <laughs> um, I am not bound by, you know, court dates. I can set my own schedule. Um, and I don't have the same anxiety that I did previously when I would get an email from opposing counsel or from another, you know, the opposing party. Um, so many of our clients are really working together and trying to find a resolution for their families. And it's just so much more of a pleasurable experience um, as a practicing attorney, mediator, and business owner. Um, and so, you know, from a, from a selfish standpoint, I appreciate that side of it as well. And, and, uh, and I would say it's not so much selfish because it frees you up to, uh, to focus on what's best for that family, not just what's, you know, there's, there's so, there's so much of in the, in the, in the, uh, divorce litigation world is about winning and losing. Um, and there are no winners in there and they're definitely, but there definitely can be losers, uh, in a divorce. So, um, but the best possible outcome comes from the parties working together with someone like you as a guide rather, rather than a, um, uh, a warrior, uh, right. you know, having, to, having to go to battle. Um, uh, because in that whole process, you know, people get consumed by the court system. I mean, it, it's, 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 you know, in a way you're also kind of protecting them from, you know, the, the impacts of, of um, decisions that they're making emotionally, you know, uh, seeking retribution, et, et cetera. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's just so much. That's why I hate the word alternative. I think everybody should look at, look at mediation and collaborative divorce as a first option right. um, and only go to litigation if it's not possible. Um, uh, it, you know, if it's if it's just too complex or one of the parties is absolutely unwilling to to negotiate you know or or or, or to uh, to operate in good faith so um but you have uh, i did want to come back to your website your youtube channel etc cetera, etc cetera, because you have produced an amazing library of content that is designed that is educational and informational and is designed to help and you make it available for free and it's for whether whether or not there's they could ever end up being a client of yours or not um uh, you've put it out there in the world and and that and that to me that's inspiring right so you know you as a content creator is inspiring and and you uh, you've done some of that or a small piece of that um through video socials and and before i ask you you know your impressions of video socials it, it, it is our sponsor because we are self-sponsored but uh video socials is a video blogging club is what we call it but essentially it is those who want to be on youtube want to have videos for the website want to have videos out there uh in the world um that are educational and informational and uh, and of value and, and make a difference really for those who, who want to consume that content. 
Um, but maybe you don't are, aren't comfortable yet on camera. Maybe you're not sure the best way to go about that, or maybe you're trying to do that via an inanimate object called a camera, uh, rather than having an audience um, that is there to support you and encourage you and and help you. So. Video socials is a concept that we put together where anywhere from five to 10 of us get together in a, in a meeting on a, a Zoom conference and we take turns recording our two or three minute videos that we're using for our marketing purposes. Uh, and we support, encourage each other and we give each other feedback and suggestions for how we might be able to t better tailor or improve. Um, and we get each other in the habit of doing it and um, and I know something that you've said in the past, Carrie, is there's an accountability component because when we try to be accountable to ourselves and we've set market, we set marketing as, as the lowest rung of the ladder of our, on our priority list. Um, uh, if we can, if we can flip the, flip the, uh, flip that on its head a little bit and, and actually make an appointment mm -hmm. and have other people that are, that are expecting you to show up and, and, uh, and we, and we contribute and learn from each other. But, What's your experience of video socials and, and why did you decide to do it and, and how are you, and, and what are you getting out of it? So I do appreciate the accountability aspect of it. Um, also, I think it has just helped me feel so much more comfortable in front of a camera. Um, I've gotten you know lots of comments that my most recent videos are you know much better than the originals um, and you just get used to, you know, being in front of the camera and knowing how to produce um, an effective video for for consumers. Um, and really, our goal is to get that information out so that people do know that there are alternatives, um, or that you know there are other dispute resolution processes, so that they don't have to go to court first. And more and more of the people who are coming to us have commented on the fact that they have watched our videos. Um, so I know that they are at least reaching, you know, people who are going through some of those challenging times. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, and folks, if you have an interest in doing videos uh, for yourself and you'd like the support and, and encouragement of working with others that are doing exactly the same thing, um, it's a uh, We'd love to have you. It's videosocials.net and just click on the guest tab at the top of the screen. There's no cost. There's no obligation. Um, but come, uh, come as a come as our guest. Um, there certainly won't be a hard sell, but you know, see if this might be something that might help you to get done what you're probably hoping to do, wanting to do, wishing you had done, and perhaps even feeling bad about not getting done. <laughs> get your videos done through video socials. So. Um, well, that, that kind of wraps up that 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 side of things. But you, you know, one of one of the things that um, I also wanted to tie in, uh, you had somebody else, uh, Emily Sumner, um, uh, with Sumner Immigration, in uh, that you had mentioned to me as somebody that might be a, a, also a good guest for Inspire the Inspiring Business Show. What what can you tell me about Emily? Sure. Emily is a immigration attorney out of Richmond, mm -hmm. and she works with businesses as well as families in completing the, you know, cumbersome immigration process. Um, and I think that she would be a value add to the Inspiring Business podcast um, for all of the things that she is doing in the immigration world. Terrific. Terrific. So um, I guess to close, if we may, Carrie, um, What's, what's one thing that you'd love people to know about not just necessarily your practice, but why they really should consider looking at this out of court dispute resolution? You know, what's what's the biggest thing that, that they need to think about? And and as it, as alternatively to that is what if they're thinking about getting a divorce, but they haven't really talked about it yet with, or, or haven't broached the subject with their spouse. Um, and if they're considering doing something like a, a mediation or, or um, you know, a, a negotiated settlement, you know, outside, outside of court, um, should they talk to you? Should, you know, what, what resources, what information should, should, should they avail themselves to? Sure. 
So the one thing that I would say is most important about the, the process or, or one key aspect is it really is custom tailored to their situation and they can make it what they need to make it for their families. Um, it can be as specific or general. Um, it can, the law is just a data point in the process. And so they can really be creative in how they approach their resolution. Um, and we can give them guidance on what we've seen other families do because we've been doing this for so long. We can, so many people just need the help and don't know what they don't know. And so we can guide them through the process and come up with potential options for them to, um, you know, kind of think through to see if it would be a good fit for them. As far as resources, that's something else that we help our clients with because we have a you know a huge professional network, um, whether it's a financial professional or a tax advisor, uh, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, um, therapists, uh, couple therapists. You know we have all of those uh, professional networks that we can re refer clients to, so that they are approaching the separation and divorce process from all of the appropriate angles. Um, we know that the legal side is just one aspect and really it takes a team of professionals for an individual to consult with so that they have all of their needs met. And that's a service that we uh, provide our clients. Terrific. Well, and again, folks, it's Jacobson Family Law and all of the other places that, uh, that I mentioned, basically pretty much anywhere on social media uh is all there and and it and it's it's uh it's what i've told clients for years and that is it's informational it's educational um and it's no risk to you to go and 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 have a look and 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 consume um you, you've got a plethora of blog posts a plethora of videos um so uh, please uh, do avail yourselves of that if uh, if you're in maryland folks uh, and even if you're not, you may find the, the information uh, incredibly valuable as well. Carrie, it's a delight to have you. Uh, thank you for who you've chosen to be and the, and, and the service that you provide. I think it's critical. I think it's, I think it's uh, one of the most important areas of, of our lives and our relationships is, is when, when it's time for a relationship to, you know, um, to transform from a marriage to, 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 uh, separate, separate lives. Um, it is a tough, one of the toughest things that anybody can go through. And I know that your, your commitment is to be there for, for, for your clients and to, um, and, and to, and to help them be whole individuals on the other side and, uh, and, and be able to, to co-parent and, and, um, and, and not carry that contention and, and, uh, venom, uh, right. forward, um, uh, after they choose to get a divorce. Thank you thank so much, you. Carrie. It's yes, wonderful. thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You've been listening to Inspiring Business with your host, Mark Bullock. Your positive comments, likes, and most importantly, your sharing of this show with others is greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to the Inspiring Business Podcast on whatever platform you prefer. You can catch prior episodes on videosocials.net and on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, and all the major podcast platforms.